One, cool. two, one, two, one, two. Hello, everyone. Time for our final session of the day. Um, fresh off the main stage, I am joined by Anish Shaganti, yes. got in one, and John Cho, the director and starring actor of their new film, Searching. And for those who haven't seen the trailer, and for those who mightn't be as aware of the plot, would you mind breaking it down for us, what it's about and what the goal of the, films, or the film is? Totally. Uh, so for those of you guys who don't know what the movie is, uh, we, John Cho and I, just made a movie called Searching. Uh, and the, as we like to pitch it, Searching is a very, very, very unconventional story, uh, a very, very classic thriller told in an extremely unconventional way. The classic part about it is that it's about a dad, played by John Cho, him, the man raising his hand, uh, and whose daughter goes missing, he tries to find her. The unconventional part about it is that the whole movie is told on the technology devices that we use every day to communicate. So it's told on laptops, smartphones, uh, tablets, uh, basically as this father breaks into his daughter's laptop to look for clues to find her. Wow, awesome. So what were some of the challenges of filming that? Because I mean, John, you've got to act a lot of this in the first person, right? Staring down the lens. Um, was that difficult? But probably a sea change from every other role you played. Yeah, it was, uh, uh, it was different from anything I'd ever done, um, uh, primarily in the absence of other people on set, uh, or rather acting across from you. So um, I'd done, it was similar in some ways to green screen work, um, but you know, in green screen work, other actors are there. This was totally new in the sense that, w w so we had, uh, mounted a GoPro to a laptop um, so that I could mimic it feel felt like typing but that but it I wasn't um, it wasn't connected to anything and um, so I was acting to a blank computer screen and um, while not actually hard work uh, <laughs> not not lifting anything heavy and I'm, I wasn't getting any calluses it was difficult in the sense that um, it, it was tricky to be present and um, you know, typically you have, I just was, I was saying to Anish earlier that it was, I just felt like a, a plumber who uh, was accustomed all his career to using a particular set of tools and then all of a sudden that toolbox was completely gone and I had to figure it out from scratch and um, that was also fun but it was challenging. Of course, it's, it's opening up a whole new skill set, I guess, and something it hasn't done before. Um, so this is the Q&A stage, as you can see. So if you have any questions for John or Anish, you can raise your hand now. If you have any throughout the course of the, of, of, of the session, please move to the front so we can be easier to find you. Um, while they're making up their minds and thinking of some questions for you, Anish, yeah. there's an overall message in this film, I guess, that we should be protecting maybe our online identities or maybe you know, protecting the online identities of our loved ones, especially in vulnerable positions like teenagers. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's fair to say. Was that the goal coming into the film, or is that something, is there a story behind the plot? Yeah, I mean, I, I mentioned this briefly outside, or in the stage there, but, you know, I, I think for the biggest intention of this movie was, I, I feel like technology, and I'm sure you guys would agree, is that it's so often incorrectly and negatively portrayed in, in Hollywood. Whether it's like a television show, or just the way, like the way our UI looks like on, on our phones, or the actual messaging about themselves as well. We're always like it told that we're addicted to our phones, we're uh, like addicted to likes, we're alienated, like everything is bad because we look at too many screens. And while I think that's true to an extent, it's sort of like looking at a hammer and saying, you know, hammer is bad, as opposed to hammer is bad, hammer can be good, hammer can be anything, depends on the way you use it. And I think for us, the big objective of the movie was, yeah, we're like point to these negative issues, it's sometimes a little bit about protection, protecting yourself online, but it's also just as much about how technology can allow us to love and to hope and to, and to, and to connect with one another as much as it is uh, the scary part about it. So I think giving the movie a very holistic look at technology was the biggest uh, drive for us, and that was something that I honestly felt like hadn't been done in a movie before. And uh, John, do you feel having played this role, has it changed your interactions with social media and technology, or maybe your perspective on it? Um, you know, I, I, I don't know that it's changed it for me. I think that's remained fairly constant, although it has given me pause uh, you know, in the way that uh, I'm just examining how I might handle it in a few years when my kids are on social media themselves. And, um, you know, uh, my boy is already so 
much more advanced than I am. He's so familiar with the computer, and it's it's um, it's a challenge. I spent my teenage years trying to outsmart my parents and trying to get take the car and go meet my friends and and my girlfriend and stuff. Yes, I had a girlfriend. <laughs> why why did you question that? Uh, <laughs> No, um, and so we were we were all as teenagers trying to get away from our parents, and now we have it's it's uh, a wake up call. You you have to be super smart in order to protect them. Absolutely, and as as parents of a as a of, of a young child and a child maybe going through their teenage years, it's something I feel you have to be aware of and be clued into. And it's maybe something that's not taught as well. I mean, growing up, we were digital natives. You know, we were the first generation to have access to the internet everywhere we went but we were never told how to be responsible with it, and I feel like that's something that needs to be regulated on a greater scale, and I feel like the movie does a great job of highlighting that. Um, do we have any questions from the audience? I see a couple of hands up there. Sarah, we'll go to you in the front there. Uh, I just wanted to thank uh, uh, all of you for making that point toward the end of the uh, presentation. Uh, you know, Asians in in the US, in the California, in Hollywood, are always portrayed, if at all, in movies as the, uh, the nerd engineers. Uh, and, and no exception. That's I mean, not true. No <laughs> nerd engineer <laughs> Asians. I mean, I, uh, sorry. Yeah, I mean, I'm the guy who Just pioneered kidding. things like Google Translate and, and Yahoo Translate. And hey, I made a Translate. commercial for Google Translate. <laughs> OK, we have to talk. Um, <laughs> I'll, but um, you know, like the fact that uh, this is being portrayed as a normal Asian American family, you know, and this is an experience that I think I probably share with uh, most of the people who made this movie. Um, has there been a discussion among the Asian American community of the the fact that you've just brought up that to represent uh, a family in a normal way and not in a caricatured, stereotyped, cliched way is actually a major breakthrough? Yeah, and that sucks, you know, yeah. the fact that we're the first ones to do this uh, in a lot of ways. Um, yeah, I mean, we're, we, we, our biggest intention in this movie is that had, had we cast an African-American family or had we cast uh, a Japanese-American family or an Indian-American family, like, none of this movie would be different. The only thing that would change is the last name. This is about an American family, you right. know, and it's about, and I think... It, so often when we were even making the movie, we would get asked, like, you know, why, why is this an Asian American family? And, like, our answer was, why not? You know, it's like that, I think, you know, growing up, I grew up in San Jose in, in Silicon Valley. Both my parents are in the tech industry. And, and, and you know, I, it was important that we cast a cast of characters that looked like the people that my parents would have over for dinner or that my parents would be working with or that just looked like the people that were, A, out there. And then, B, also never, ever, I never saw myself in any sort of, action movie role or thriller role, you know, growing up, you know, as an Indian American, like, we, we also got, like, a, our own similar, like, silo of kinds of roles that we wanted to, uh, saw ourselves in. So I think it was a big objective to, to, to myself, to Seb Ahanian, who's, 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 who's the co-writer there, um, to sort of do that. And I think it sucks that this is one of the first movies to do that, but I'm, I'm glad that, uh, the I mean, overall, so far, the Asian American, um, uh, feed, not feedback, but, like, the support has been growing as they hear about this movie, mostly because like it has nothing to do with anyone being Asian American. It's just about it being an American. John, Anish, um, you know it's interesting that we're here in Hong Kong uh, showing this film. One of my first films is called Pavilion of Women, and we shot it in Suzhou, um, and which is a couple hours uh, outside of Shanghai. And the director of that film was uh, from Hong Kong. His name is Yim Ho. And it was then that I started thinking, back then, very, very early on, thinking about the eye of the filmmaker and what the attitude of the filmmaker is and how the film sees its subjects and how does the film feel towards its subjects. And um, because when I saw that film, I literally looked different. And Asians look different to me shot by him than Asians looked in American films. And in American films, you could feel that the film saw them as strangers. And, what, and it, it's hard to quantify how you get there. It's a, it's a combination of narrative, casting, hair, makeup, costume, lighting, but the sum of it is 
very obvious. And this film, it's not, an, it's not explicitly political, but the most political thing that it does is its eye. And it looks at its Asian American subjects and goes and forgets it. And that is a remarkable thing. And, um, and I'm very proud of that, to be in, to be in the film. Of, you know, it's one of many reasons I'm proud of it. Thank you guys for that. Very yeah. interesting. Great question. Um, there's a gentleman behind you there if you want to come forward to the front. Nice tuxedo. Bow tie, yeah. Oh, What's yeah. up, dude? Ready to go. Thank you guys. Came so for the Q&A. Yes, so firstly, thank you for the opportunity. Um, I'd like to say, John, I'm a massive fan of the Harold and Kuma series for two reasons. <laughs> Your deadpan humor, sir, was fantastic. And secondly, my last name is Kumar, so. <laughs> All right. Thank you, thank you for being here. It's a pleasure. <laughs> question is for you, Anish. Yeah. We um, should get a picture. Please, sir. Harold and Kumar. <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> and Anish, I guess the question is firstly, um, you've made a film now with such a prominent message at the moment in our current landscape. Um, it is evolving. The next five to ten years, cybersecurity is going to be incredibly important. So congratulations on that. Um, unique style of filmmaking. What's next on your cards? And what message would you like to portray in that film? Uh, the next movie that we're making takes place entirely on an Apple Watch. <laughs> totally kidding. Yeah, for those of you who took me seriously. Uh, no. Um, the, uh, it's just a pedometer. It's a <laughs> <laughs> just show someone how fast they're running. Uh, it's it's going to be called Risty Business. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, um, sorry, sorry, I had to. Uh, so, no, the, the, you know, I, I so far have been very, the, the narrative of my life has sort of been telling stories about technology. Uh, you know, I, the, the first thing that I ever made that got me any sort of attention was a, a two-minute video that took place on Google Glass that got me my job at Google. And then I worked at Google for two years, and I made commercials about Google Translate, search, uh, I worked for the search team, worked for, uh, I mean, the YouTube team. There's a, a lot of teams at Google that we, that we kind of made commercials for. And then take that, and then I went from there and made Searching, which is a movie that takes place on screens in general. Uh, I think for the moment, I've said what I wanted to say about technology. Uh, I think the next thing that I will be doing, which we just are setting up right now, is we'll, we'll be shooting in the fall. And this is something that Seb Ahanian and I wrote. He, we, he wrote this film as well, produced it. And then Natalie Kasavian, who produced this film, is also part of, uh, is another thriller. Uh, it, the only comparison to search that it or searching that it has is that it's about a parent and daughter relation, or a parent and, and child relationship, uh, except this next one's a little more dark and definitely shot on normal cameras, which is really exciting, you know. You have, when you have uh, a character, a detective going online, that page is created by the props department, or the art department, and they have a couple of weeks to do it. Um, and they're not experts in that. They do all kinds of other things. And uh, he spent... This team spent a year after we year and shot, a, half. a year and a half after I went home and uh, had a drink. Uh, they, <laughs> they, they went and made the movie, and it was like reverse engineering sets and costumes and characters and uh, lighting, and it was all done uh, in reverse order. Uh, and you can see the care, and I, and you should. The testament is that you should forget what you're seeing. Uh, you should accept it immediately, and I, and I did, which is um, pretty amazing. Yeah, that, that, is, that is very interesting. I just want to touch back on what you said, Anish, because, you know, traditional script, guy walks into bar, says this, yada, yada. You had to actually say, drags window open, searches yeah. for thing, thing isn't there, where's my daughter? Yeah. So was your script as a result extra, extra long, or is it kind of difficult for you to <laughs> reach on? Question. or difficult? Difficult to memorize because he had all these actions involved as yeah. well. Yeah. So we, I mean, have any of you guys looked, at, read a traditional screenplay before? Okay, a few yeah, of yeah. you guys. So it, they're really weird, right? Like the, you, you, every scene starts off with interior, INT or EXT, interior, exterior, where the scene's going to take place. Then the location, ex interior house dash night. It tells you everything about the scene and the content of the scene is underneath it. Like John walks into the house, he says hi. For us, we, like, if we wrote out every scene location, it would end up looking like interior, Google Chrome, dash Facebook, dash Facebook photos, <laughs> dash uh, tag photos, dash night, slash continuous, or something like that. And it, we realized like, very quickly that like, the language of the story we were telling did not fit into the mold 
like every aspect of the movie uh, into a traditional screenplay format. So we ended up writing what was called a scriptment, which was what we actually what you read as a script, which was basically what we wrote on Google Docs. We put together a big Google Doc of like every single line of action that happens in the movie just written in a way that we would understand, saying like the cursor moves trepidly to the window over here or something like that. But um, yeah, it was a big challenge to sort of translate a normal movie into into the screenplay. What 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 I realized later on was how much work there was because it could be a, a line of text in the scriptment that says, you know, David scrolls down the, uh, Margot's Facebook page. That seems very simple, and that's just one sentence. But that requires so much work. So <laughs> much work. All these profiles that were painstakingly drawn so that. You, if this ever comes out on Blu-ray, and it will, but like you could pause it at any moment, search it, and find it authentic. Zoom into any moment. That's the best part about the movie for me is like if you pause, like we had to make this movie. I call it pause worthy because if you pause the movie, if you, and you looked around the frame, it all has to make sense. It can't just be a bunch of lorem ipsums, you know, like which we all use as like <laughs> temp when we're putting together a website. Like you know, and that's what we originally had. It was lorem ipsum, lorem ipsum, lorem ipsum. When we quickly paused it, we're like. Shit, we have so much work to do. Uh, so if you pause the movie now, you'll see like nine other storylines that are happening simultaneous to the main plot of the film just by looking at email subjects or email headers and, and, and all, all of that stuff going on. But as far as the challenge goes, I remember the editors, we had two editors who I think deserve an Academy Awards for this movie because it's so complicated what they did. But like they, I remember them looking at the script and being like, Anish, it says a cacophony of images fly by the screen. How does that? How are we supposed to make a cacophony of images fly by the screen? But, um, anyways, it was a massive challenge to put together, and it's just why it took a year and a half. When we watch the film and we pause it and we go to search for those people you made up on Facebook, yeah. did you uh, make profiles and pictures and holiday yeah. albums and favorite albums and all so that stuff? So every single asset and photo you see on in this movie is somebody whose photo and the photo owner we had to get cleared. So they're all, almost all of them are, are my friends or Seb or Natalie's friends. They're all names we had to get cleared. We had to get their photos on Facebook. The whole movie is like, takes place, uh, a, a lot of it takes place on Facebook photos. And you see a lot of photos. And the, the daughter in the film is in high school. So basically, I went to all of my friends' Facebook and like clicked on their profile picture and then went one left to their earliest photo and like stole those. And then basically got a massive list of, of photos that I had from all my friends. I mean, we're talking like into the thousands and then put them in the movie, and then afterwards had to look at every photo and get legal to sort of go through and get every name cleared, every photo cleared, every person in every photo cleared, and then obviously the photo owner cleared for everything. Oh, I, I'm never doing this again, but I really <laughs> hope you enjoy the one, uh, one thing we did do. And your friends just got 8,500 friend requests every right. night when the film <laughs> yeah. comes out as well. Right, we're going to have a few more questions in the crowd. If you have any, uh, stick your hand up. I see one over here, madam, if we get the microphone over to you. Hello, how are you? Uh, hi, I'm Ellie, and I, I really enjoyed your movie Love My Island. Oh, you it saw was it? amazing. If you didn't try, you should. The question is this. I realize that for nowadays that an an anonymous who is not like not John Choi can act, act and take a video, and they can modify into as if the John Choi took the video, right? So how do you think about that maybe Maybe another one can substitute a real actor, and 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 the other thing that is that uh, nowadays the actors just use their facial expressions, and the computer programmers modify and change that images into kind of that another like monster or animal. So, how do you think about these changes? Ooh, that's a big question. Um, you worried about getting trolled by people with... So basically you're saying, like, somebody could just put their face on John, on John's body, and then send it off as their own work. Well... Are, are you afraid of fortune? <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> we... I, I still think um, that technology, we, our, our human eye can sense authenticity. And, you know, um, if you see a heavily CGI'd... Uh, movie, you, uh, I think the highest compliment you can pay it is, that looks really good. And versus believing it, you know? And it's the difference between a practical explosion, if you see like the old Star Wars movies, 
Uh, of course, it's not logical that there's an explosion with sparks in space, but you see an ex you're seeing something explode, and you know it's not actually the Death Star. You know that it's some some model, you know, with fire a firecracker in it. But you don't say that looks great. You just uh, believe that there's an explosion because it is. And I still think the human eye sees something and can see a person and know that it's a person. And we can see um, a facsimile of a person and can say, that looks amazing, that looks great, but not believe. We're not quite there. I don't know how soon we'll be there. It could be tomorrow. It could be never. I don't know. But, um, but we'll figure it out, I feel. like I'll be dead. <laughs> don't, don't say that. Technology moves pretty That's quick. That's true. Actually, <laughs> It's uh, two minutes from now, so it'll be fine. You'll strip that space. Well, I don't know. Yeah, it's like it's almost <laughs> like with phones, we are artificial intelligence. We just voluntarily became robots, into into a large extent. You know, we. That's yeah. another discussion. Yeah. Sorry. Wow, that's <laughs> deep. We just kind of we just kind of got in their way. Uh, well, we got another five years until they completely <laughs> destroy us anyway. You know. So, any more questions from the crowd? Stick your hand up. Uh, I see this this lady in the front here. And another one. If you want to just move to the front, we'll get you afterwards. All right. Hi, uh, first of all, I want to say that I really, really loved the movie. Oh, you saw it too. Awesome. Of course, yeah. So um, one of my questions is production-wise, acting-wise, and story-wise, what's the biggest backlash that you're afraid of receiving because of this movie? Ooh. Uh, biggest backlash that I'm afraid of. Oh, never work again. You know, you're terrible. Uh, I don't know. I think... backlash that I'm afraid of. Do you have an answer to that? I think for me, I don't, I, don't th I don't want people to see this as some kind of polemic about our lives online. What it is, we are s merely um, recognizing that we live our lives online and we're not, we're not trying to say we should stop being online and it is, there is, there's a story that involves a person that goes missing, so there is danger, and it involves, um, and the, 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 the mechanics of it are, are done online, but I don't think the film is, is uh, out to make a statement about that. If anything, it's really like, um, it's an exploration of, of data. There's so much data right now, that more than it, there ever was in the history of, of, of of uh, humankind, and data doesn't necessarily mean knowledge or truth. And you know, sh so David, uh, my character, can look up a lot of information about his child, but does he know her? You know, uh, and it is distinguishing between the two and an exploration of that. But I don't want people to think that we're out to make some sort of sweeping statement about technology. Yeah, agreed. I don't want us to come off like we're vilifying or, or, or antagonizing technology. And I think that is, I keep saying this, it's like this movie is not a, uh, this is not a like a attack on tech. This is like hopefully will be an accurate portrayal for once. And I think like if, 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 if I'm worried about backlash, it's, it's maybe a, 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 something ignorant being said about that. Um, but yeah. Hopefully people just see the movie and then, they can, and then anything they say is technically valid, you know, so. Yeah, well, I, I don't think anyone's going to see the movie and think you guys are Luddites or anything, you know what I mean? You're not, you're not afraid of tech. I think you're making a very valid point that <laughs> there are a lot of protections online that haven't been afforded to a certain generation, but now we're more self-aware. Sure, yeah. And I think, I think the movie represents that in a good way. Um, we had a question at the front here, if she's still there. How are you going? We're actually running low on time, guys. So this is going to be our last question, so fire ahead. First of all, congratulations on your movie. Thank you. And uh, it's a question for Anish. I was just uh, slightly curious, given that you're from a South Asian background, if you would ever consider giving a helping hand to Bollywood. Uh, I've been, okay. Uh, yeah, Good question. Uh, that, you know, my parents ask me that a lot. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I think I would. I think for the moment, I think the next few projects are lined up. It'll be in, uh, will be a little more English based, but um, that is absolutely something I would be open to doing in the future. Why did she not ask me that? Do you wanna, you John, would you uh, start in a Bollywood <laughs> film? That would be. That sounds like tremendous no, that's fun. How's yeah. your that's dancing? tremendous fun. <laughs> <laughs> you're good at, you're good at, good at moving. You can join in a mass dance brigade. 
There we go. Happy days. You got the role. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to leave it there. Give it up for Anish and John. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, guys.